Here is a look at Zappi's day against the Bills. He finished 16 to 26 for 209 yards, also scored on an 18 yard run. But Zappi had more interceptions with three than the Patriots had first downs, two during New England's first six possessions. Here is Zappi on that dismal start. I mean, it's, it's football, things like that are gonna happen. You're gonna have turnovers, you're gonna throw three interceptions in a game, but it's just how you respond, how you, you come back the next series and how you play. Um, and I felt like we did a great as an offense in the second half coming back. Um, you know, we kind of flushed everything. We came out together and we, you know, we played a great second half. It just wasn't enough because of what we did in the first half. Current a couple weeks in uh, with Bailey Zappi, I think four weeks in now with him as your starting quarterback. How do you feel about him as a starting quarterback? How do you feel about him as a feel... quarterback? Oh, as a, as a quarterback, he is trying to go from a developmental end of the roster player to proving he's a number two. Yesterday didn't offend me greatly because it's just a byproduct of a young player trying to understand an offense and go against a pretty good defense. He sees some things that don't work out. Big deal. But this is not like me saying, oh, no, this jeopardizes his chances of being the starter next year because I never pretended that he would be hoping to be that. This is a lost season. These are lost games and he's getting starts that will prove to the Patriots where he fits in their depth chart. But to me, this didn't dash any hopes of him being useful in the role that he's going to ultimately have. Phil, on, on the breakdown, you and Ted talked a lot about how different of a quarterback Bailey Zappi was when, when faced with the blitz versus when he was not blitzed. And I, I've just, I guess I've been wondering, because everyone, again, that, that watches these games closely keeps saying this is just a number two guy. And I feel like one of the big reasons why is once defenses start to figure out what kind of quarterback he is, I feel like they're starting to expose his weaknesses. Which tends to happen with backup quarterbacks, right? They play more, and the more they play, they tend to come crashing back down to earth. So I still look at this as he's got a bunch of opportunities here to prove that he's worthy of that number two spot, which I, I based on what we've seen so far, I'm not comfortable with moving forward. And he's only got you're one not, more game to You're not comfortable with him forward. as the number two even. No. Okay. And, and I would be comfortable with him certainly as the guy who's got to be a bridge maybe to a rookie who takes over. You're telling me Bailey Zappi for the first month of the season is a, is a good option for a team that wants to do anything, I just – I don't believe that. I, I don't – I like the backup quarterback, especially for a team that might have a young starter, to either – preferably if it's a young starter, it's got to be the older guy who you know can play the game for about a month and not turn it over three times. If you've got a more veteran guy, Greg, then maybe you want a younger backup with some developmental upside, which I'm not sure he has either in terms of physical skill set. So, to me, he's a three right now. The only scenario that I'm okay with Bailey Zappi as a backup is if you have an established starter. Like, you know, because I think he has proven with his moxie, his smarts, his toughness that, you know, he can go in there and he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to sort of, you know, go down to any sort of pressure or environment. Like, he, you know, he's, he's been put in some tough environments and he's done well. But, you know, the longer he plays, he's just limited. I mean, teams started to, you know, they, they – the smart teams, as opposed to Denver, the smart teams looked at what he wanted to do against Denver. They were ready for it. They had answers. They were jumping routes. And then all of a sudden there are problems. His greatest attributes have been highlighted by the fact that he does have the boldness to step up, mm -hmm. to remain focused down the field when there's chaos around him, to not get caught up looking at the rush. And he's shown more velocity and downfield accuracy than Mac. I don't know if he's got vastly, a vastly stronger arm, but he doesn't throw touch passes as often as Mac does. So that's been to his credit. And I think additionally to his credit, he has a very high opinion of himself. <coughs> oh, yeah. He doesn't buy into the things that we're saying. He's a three, he's a two, he's a developmental guy. He believes himself to be better. So that works in his favor. But that's additionally... It does it? Because he well, makes throws sometimes, like the throw on that slant where his head is facing one way and then he just comes back the other way, assuming it's going to be what? there, maybe because there's some confidence there deep with him. And I give him credit for – if he wasn't confident, he wouldn't even be in the league. So, yes, I think it works with him to a degree, but I think it also gets him into trouble it at does. times. And that's why he's so consistently inconsistent. And he spent the entire camp trying to throw from ridiculous platforms mm -hmm. and sidearm balls outside, and it was disgusting, which is part of the reason he probably ended up being released. But – if you look at the two plays yesterday, if you want to hang your hat on, okay, well, he came back and he did well. He had a 48-yard screen to Kevin Harris, mm -hmm. and then they sent the entire house at him on a blitz, and once everybody ran past him, it was like, okay, I'll just trot into the end zone. So that was one of the touchdowns. It's hard to get giddy about that performance. God bless him. 
for being out there and having the team down six th- late. I thought one of his best plays was he avoided a safety on one. I yep. thought that was one yeah. of his best plays of the entire game. And, and again, that sort of gets down to who he is. The Gasecki play, the Jalen Rager um, throw down the sideline where Rager made an unbelievable catch. He makes plays. Yes. Yeah. But he also, you know, the keeping the plays alive thing is a double-edged sword for him because sometimes it gets him into a lot of trouble. I'm also a little surprised uh, of the – the excuse making after games and it's not the it's this weekend isn't the first time we've heard it where he goes to great lengths to be like well if x y and z didn't happen I mean we were right there we were right there and it and that to me also speaks to his confidence where he really thinks that well I'm a lot better than four turnovers I mean if I just clean a few things up we're winning all these games I, I think it also speaks to where the Patriots are as a team right now I mean the guy ahead of him Mac was somebody who was grumbling and Brian Hoyer was there with him and saying, yeah, you're right, Mac. So he's watched that for two years and he's watched Matt Patricia and Joe Judge maybe look at Mac and go, yeah, well, he's kind of a baby and he blames this and they blame Mac and Bill has clearly blamed Mac and it's just turned into this firestorm where we saw on two different occasions yesterday him outwardly gesturing toward the sideline, Bailey Zappi, during plays that went sideways for him. And it kind of, I thought, Greg, you're nodding. I, that Yep. They got to clear that crap out of the system that Mac got involved in too. Yeah, I mean, it just it just goes to they they need a complete reset on offense. And what really irritated me about yesterday and some of the post game comments, including Bill and I wrote a column on this at BSJ, was you know Bill talks about turnovers, like you know he he gets disgusted about turnovers and he thinks like it's just in a vacuum that it, like you can just get a player and he's not going to turn the ball over. No, turnovers are a byproduct of the system that you put on offense, the lack of protection the lack of uh, targets on the outside, the the horrendous coaching from assistant coaches. That causes turnovers. You know who's around the Patriots with turnovers this year in terms of giveaways? The Chiefs and the Bills because they haven't done a good job surrounding their quarterbacks either. Turnovers just don't happen in a vacuum, Bill. They happen because you allow it. You foster the environment where people have to try to make plays and then they turn the ball over. And the Chiefs and the Bills have the talent to make up for those types of plays, which obviously sets to. the Patriots <laughs> apart from the rest of the teams at the top of the league. Well, at the very least, they have quarterbacks. Well, except for Josh Allen, it looked great yesterday. But for the most part, they have quarterbacks who can cover up more mistakes than the Patriots do.